Hey guys, welcome to my greenhouse. I'm Catherine and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. So I didn't plan on doing a video today. I'm out in my greenhouse starting seeds and I figured I'm out here and I'm doing so why the heck not bring you along with me. So I've already started trays. I am working on my summer garden and confession time, I am behind the ball. So I have no excuses aside from I just haven't gotten out here and got it done. So today I was determined to start peppers and tomatoes because those are some of my favorites to grow. So uh, I'm New Mexican, big on salsa, love salsa. And so I have got one, two trays of peppers and a tray of tomatoes and I was going to start my herbs. And I thought that I would just show you kind of my system. I've shown it before. I think the lighting was terrible on that video. So I thought, oh, it's Bria. I get to see you twice today. That's my daughter. Love you. So, um, so I thought I'd show you my system again because I think that you can never get information too many times. And I just wanted to show you, I absolutely love these trays. So they are styrofoam. I consider them zero waste because I've been using these same trays for about 10 years now. And I like, I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, so when I'm ready to transplant them directly into the garden, you just poke them from down below and they pop right out. So this system, hey Douglas, welcome. So it's good to see you too. So this tray is a multi-layered system. It's got the bottom here, which is, and then it's got a little lift here so that the seedlings themselves aren't sitting directly in the water. And then, let's see, there's a capillary mat. And so what this does is it sucks up the water so that the seedlings, I'm not having to worry about coming out and watering them every day because if it were up to me, I would kill every single one of them every single time. And so this kind of does it for me. One thing you do have to be concerned about when you have a capillary mat system is that your soil's constantly wet. And so something that I discovered after killing many trays of seedlings is cinnamon. And I've talked about this before, and it's like revolutionary as far as seed starting goes. But uh, there's a, it's like an algae or fungal growth that happens when you have damp soil like this. And it's uh, called dampening off. Makes sense, right? And so it's like this thick layer of algae that grows on the surface of this uh, soil. And cinnamon itself is an antifungal, so I found that if I just sprinkle it right there on the surface, you don't have to mix it into your soil, just put it on the surface, it will actually prevent that fungal growth from happening. And so that's been a huge lifesaver. Anastasia, welcome from Greece. That is so stinking cool. I love it every time you're on here. So I, I already got my peppers going. John, do you have problems with tomato worms? Yes, and I was going to talk about that right now, so I'm glad you brought that up. Tomato hornworms are an issue, I think, pretty much everywhere. And I battle it. Hello, Kathy, North Star Prep Stetter. Welcome. So, um, tomato hornworms, they actually turn into the most beautiful moth. As, uh, they're called a butterfly, or not butterfly, hummingbird moth. And they look literally just like little hummingbirds, and they're beautiful. And so I have this battle because I love the moth, hate the worm. So, because they will get in and they will devastate your tomatoes in almost overnight. They blend right in. Oh, hello! Is it Fetonia? That's Julie's going to ask about a soap question for me. Oh, perfect. I, I will definitely follow up with her. And let's see. So, Layla. Oh, very good. You're from Norway. How cool! So, uh, YouTube and technology in general is just so neat that it can connect all of us from all over the world. So tomato hornworms are an issue here. I battle them. The chickens love them. They blend right into the tomato. So you can be staring right at them and oh, they're super camouflage. So my friend Mary at Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and that's actually my preferred seed source. I adore her and I have a link for her in the description. If you guys are looking for quality heirloom seeds from a small mom and pop company with the absolute best customer service, she's your go-to. So, does diatomaceous earth help with hornworms? You know, that I'm not too sure about. I do use DE in the garden. I use it regularly. It's, I, I, I'm a hand picker. 
So I'll just go out there early in the morning is ideal. Tomato hornworms, they tend to start up at the top of the plant early in the morning and then work their way down with the heat of the day. So if you can catch them early in the morning, that's the best way to find them. You can also see sign of them because they'll poop and you'll find like little uh, clumps of poop right underneath them. So Douglas says I got my garden seeds from her because of your last video. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. You will absolutely love her because she's got tremendous germination rates and she's just fabulous. So, but something she told me, uh, she's big on companion planting and something that tomato hornworms absolutely love is dill. And so because I'm not necessarily looking to eradicate them, what I really want, my goal is to coexist. And that goes with predators across the board. So it's not just tomato hornworms. I don't necessarily want them in my garden. I do love the moth that they produce. So it's kind of, ah. Oh. I asked Mary, I said, what can I do to be able to coexist? And she says, plant lots of dill. And if you plant it away from your garden, uh, chances are really good that that's gonna draw your tomato hornworms to them and your tomatoes have a better chance of survival. And so dill is on my docket here and I am going to plant so much dill. And this is also a positive because pickles. Uh, who doesn't like pickles? So I grow tons of cucumbers and so dill and pickle or cucumbers go hand in hand. So it's kind of a win-win. So that's my, that's my tip for you for tomato hornworms is plant lots of dill. So and speaking of coexisting, I have coyotes out here. I have a no-kill policy as far as predators go. Lana, good morning! Welcome from northern New Mexico! So, uh, and I've got this goat. I know I've told you about her, PETA. Uh, she lives up to her name, Pain in the Rear. So the A starts, it stands for rear. But uh, she was an only goat. It was her and a dog, and she thinks that anything canine is her friend. The other day I had my peas honking, my chickens were going crazy, I looked up overhead, there was a hawk circling, I assumed that was it, and then I see my idiot goat just prancing across the yard, happy as can be, and I realized there was a coyote right outside my fence line, and PETA walks right up to her, hello Luann, welcome! So PETA walks right up to this coyote and they're sniffing, nose to nose, she thinks that this coyote's friend. So, but, so I walked over and chased the coyote off. I do believe that is the reason that I am losing birds like crazy. I try to not count my birds because it gets discouraging. I try to have so many chickens that I just kind of don't even notice. And I know that's kind of a sad policy, but I realized the other day that I've lost 40 chickens in the last 12 months. Most of it is to coyotes. I know we have owls, we have bobcats, we've got We've got mountain lion in the neighborhood. I'm thankful that I haven't walked out and encountered one. But I think that coyotes and hawks are my predominant. That's hello. Oh, it's, I'm stage just saying hello, Lana. That's so cool. So I did want to show you guys something. I know that's a lot of birds to lose, isn't it, Kathy? As I'm disappointed, my policy is just keep cranking out birds. So I do have 12 in a brooder right now. And... They're getting ready to move outside to one of my transitionary coops, and then I put 27 more eggs into the incubator. So I'm hoping that I can just keep ahead of the game. Part of my losses, well, a good majority of my losses, I have to take responsibility for this, is it's me. Because I've been lazy, I haven't been coming out and closing the coops at night. I just want my birds to be able to kind of come and go. And so they do put themselves up at night, I just haven't been closing the door, and I think that's part of my losses. So if I can keep on top of that and me be more responsible about it, it should cut down. So I did want to show you something neat. As I open up these packets, Mary, she put such care and love into her seeds. So these are oregano. Can you guys see how teeny tiny those are? So she packaged them. So not only did she put them in her, and this is all recycled post-consumer paper, which I just adore but she put them inside this little tiny plastic packet so that there's just extra care. She just, she puts her heart and soul into her seeds and I just adore that. So today I am planting, like I said, I did my peppers, I did my tomatoes, and now I'm working on my herbs. And so a rule of thumb, something teeny tiny like this, you don't really bear 